Good morning. It's nice to see everyone today. It's a special Sunday here at Our Redeemer. A lot of things going on. Uh, first off, it is Reformation Sunday, uh, the Sunday in the Lutheran Church that we celebrate the contributions of Martin Luther and sort of the Protestant Church. So we'll think about him a little bit today. But it's also Confirmation Sunday here. In the 1030 service today, six of our ninth graders will be confirmed. Uh, they'll read their faith statements. They'll make their confirmation vows. And they've been working hard on that. So uh, looking forward to that during the 1030 service. Also today, uh, our third graders, as is custom here, will receive their Bibles. These are Bibles they'll use in their cross-training classes and their confirmation classes, and hopefully through their high school years and into the future. And so later in the service, we'll invite the third graders and their parents up to receive their Bibles. So a lot of, a lot of fun, exciting things going on here at Our Redeemer today. A few other announcements here before we get going. Uh, Young and Spirit will be meeting on Thursday. Young and Spirit is our retirement age group. They meet the first Thursday of each month. They usually have either a fun activity or a special guest. This year we have a, repre a representative of Hospice of the Red River Valley. Uh, they'll be here to present about that work and that ministry. And so I encourage you uh, to come and enjoy uh, not just that lecture, but, but also some, some fellowship, some food. It'll be a potluck. Uh, good thing. Uh, Vicar John uh, has been uh, kind of starting or sort of reinvigorating our college ministry, and there's going to be a college student Thanksgiving, kind of a Friendsgiving, as you've put it, on November 16th at 6.30. If you would like to contribute to that, um, there's going to be a sign-up sheet on the Ministry Action Board if you'd like to provide a dish. So uh, consider helping out in that way. Uh, celebration of Grace. Today's the last day to purchase your tickets. Uh, that's a dinner and auction at Grace Lutheran School. So the events bulletin board just down here uh, will have more information about that. It's not in the bulletin, but we announced it last week. Uh, shoebox packing. That's become a tradition here. Orphan Grain Train. They they, they take shoeboxes packed with Christmas gifts for kids all over the world. Uh, we are going to pack those shoeboxes to be sent out on November 12th. So not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, we're going to get adults and Sunday school kids together during that education hour. We're going to pack those boxes. But in the meantime, we need the toys and the items to fill those boxes. So take a look at the display out in the lobby area. There's these little kind of ornaments hanging from a tree. You can take those with you. Uh, it's a shopping list. So uh, please consider contributing to the cause in that way. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper later in the service today. Just a reminder that uh, in this Lutheran church, we believe that we are truly receiving Christ's body and blood in this meal. And we invite you to come forward if you share those same beliefs. I think that's all I have for announcements. It's great to see all of you here today. Like I said, a very exciting day here at Our Redeemer. Let's go ahead and take a few moments. Let's greet each other, and then we will sing our opening hymn. You may be seated.
Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of God Almighty, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave his life for, for ours on the cross, that we now stand righteous before you by faith. Grant us to trust not in our own righteous actions, but always in Jesus alone, that we may live now and forever in the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn.
continue with our readings from the Bible. The first lesson is from the 46th chapter of Psalms. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the third chapter of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting it is excluded by what kind of law by a law of works no but by the law of faith for we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law this is the word of the lord thanks be to god please stand for the reading of the holy gospel The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We continue by confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, 
who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we invite our third graders and their parents to come up so the third graders can receive their Bibles. Well, good morning, everybody. How's it going? Are you guys excited to receive your Bibles today? This is a big day. I'm glad that you guys came up, and you're all dressed so nicely, too, especially my friend Asher. He always looks sharp. All right, let's, let's go ahead and hand out these Bibles, and then we'll talk about what they mean a little bit. Let's start with uh, Brooklyn. You want to come here? This is Brooklyn Nundall. Congratulations. That's your Bible. Take care of it. It's very important. All right, who's next? Asher, come on up, bud. All right. But you turn and kind of wave to everybody saying, see ya. There you go. <laughs> Is that Grandpa back there? Pretty neat. All right. Friend Jonah. Jonah, can get your Bible. Make sure Grandma and Grandpa can see you, okay? All right. Very good. Very good. Maddie. Congratulations, Maddie. Can, can they see you? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. And one more. My friend Ben. Come here, Ben. You're welcome. You're welcome. Very good. Okay, so you guys have your Bibles now. And I want to talk about what the Bible is just a little bit. If you're paying close attention in the Bible reading we just heard, Jesus talked about the Bible. He says that this Bible is the Word of God. And if you know the Word of God, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Inside that book that you hold in your hands now, it's the truth. It's what God wanted us to know about how everything was made, about how we're supposed to live. That Bible talks about what Jesus did so that we could be saved. He died on the cross and rose from the grave. This Bible tells us so many important things, the most important things. But we have to open it up and read it, don't we? We have to open it up and read it. Today is a special day for a couple of reasons. You got your Bibles today, that's really cool. And uh, it's also Reformation Day. Does anyone here know what Reformation Day is? It's a day where we think about a man named Martin Luther. And you'll learn about him over the next few years. And, and Martin Luther wanted everyone to be able to read the Bible. You see, Martin Luther lived in a time where almost no one was able to read the Bible. That, that the church didn't want people to read the Bible. And even if they could read the Bible, it wasn't written in a language that they understood. And so one of the things that Martin Luther did is that he translated the Bible into the language of the people so that people like you and me could read the Bible. And that's one of the things we celebrate on Reformation Day. Something that's going to happen in the second service at 1030 is it's also Confirmation Day. How many of you have seen uh, Confirmation students during Wednesdays, right? They're in 7th and 8th and, and ninth grade, and they learn from the small catechism, and they've been learning from their Bible for a few years, and that's the course that you're on. You're in third grade in a few years, right? After reading your Bible, after learning those stories, after learning about what God wants you to know, you're going to be confirmed someday. And that's something that's really, really exciting. But here's the thing about these Bibles. They're special, right? They're new. And sometimes when we have nice new things, we kind of want to keep them nice and new and maybe put them on a shelf and, and don't touch them. But that's the opposite of what we want to do with our Bibles, we don't want clean, new Bibles, do we? We want Bibles that have fingerprints on them. We want Bibles that have notes written in them. We want Bibles where the pages are a little bit crumpled up because you've been reading it, you've been turning those pages. We want Bibles where you've taken your, your highlighters and highlighted passages that are important to you. So that's my encouragement to all of you today. This Bible is very important. God wanted you to know what his truth is, but it only works if we open that Bible and read it. And so parents, that's where you come in. I encourage you, help them read their Bible. 
Inspire them to read the Bible. Tell them your favorite Bible verses, what the Bible means to you. And that's not just parents, that's grandparents, that's aunts, uncles, older brothers and sisters. Help them read these Bibles. We know that it can be a little bit tricky. There's some big words in this Bible, but if we work together, we can learn a lot about God and we can learn a lot about his son, Jesus. So Vicar John has a little gift for you so that you can keep those Bibles, well, well, you can get them not nice and new, right? You can write all over them. So Vicar John, I'm going to go pass those out to everybody. These are highlighters for your Bible. So open those books up, right? Highlight the passages that mean a lot to you, and uh, look forward to having you guys come up through cross-training in Sunday school, and, and we'll do confirmation together in just a few years, okay? So thank you for coming up and receiving your Bible today. Let's, uh, as a congregation, thank and encourage these third graders. Good job. All right, thank you kids and parents. You can go back to your seat now. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Confirmation Sunday, and, and they're going to be making faith statements, our confirmands, during the second service. And so they're going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So I didn't prepare the biggest, longest message today. And really, in preparing this message, I was thinking about six particular ninth graders. But it doesn't mean that message doesn't apply to all of us. I want to ask you, Canada, think of of something here. You know, those of you who have been confirmed, 
those of you who are older than 14 years old, 15 years old, with a little bit of perspective, with a little bit of experience, what would you go back and tell your 8th or ninth grade self on your confirmation day? I know that's kind of just a, a silly experiment as time moves on, but what advice would you have for the younger version of yourself? The version of yourself who is kind of standing at a precipice, who is making vows, who was making a commitment to follow the Lord, to be one of his disciples. I'm not talking about stock tips or anything like that, I'm not necessarily talking about career advice, but in terms of the faith, in terms of faith, what would you tell yourself? What advice would you have? When I think back at my 14, 15-year-old self, and, and this is what I'm going to tell the ninth graders during the second service, you know, we taught them a lot of lessons about faith, about love and compassion and charity. We've, we extolled the virtues of being a, a lifelong learner and, and being investing in God's Word, and all of those are very important things. We've taught them what it means to be saved by grace, apart from works of the law. When I really think about the main message that I needed to hear, and what I believe our ninth graders need to hear, it's simply this. Be courageous. Because being a Christian, being a real Christian, a true Christian, it's not for the faint of heart. It takes courage. It takes bravery. It always has, and it always will. It was never supposed to be easy. It was never supposed to be comfortable. We were never supposed to fit in with the world. It was always supposed to take courage. Really think about that. Think about those characters in the Bible that we talk about from the time we're knee-high. Those early Sunday school stories. What do all of those characters have in common? We could talk about their faith, certainly there is faith, but, but how does that faith manifest? Is it ever easy? It's rarely easy. It always takes significant courage to follow the Lord. Think about those heroes of the Bible, going all the way back to Genesis. Think about Noah. It took courage. Abraham, moved to a land that you've never been to. Took courage. Joseph, being sold into slavery by his brothers, being falsely imprisoned, it took courage. Moses, leading the Israelites out of oppression and bondage and slavery. Courage. Facing the threats of Pharaoh. You go on and on, whether it's David and Goliath or Daniel and the lion's den. Every character you think of in the Bible. Courageous. Ruth, Esther, you go on and on and on and into the New Testament. John the Baptist preaching that the kingdom of heaven was at hand and losing his head for it. Courage. St. Paul turning from his life as a Pharisee, turning from everything he knew and loved and valued. Courage. Think about the disciples. They're not always courageous. Jesus dies, and like cowards, they lock themselves away in that tomb, but upon see, or in that upper room, I should say. But upon seeing the resurrected Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, they go out into the world courageously, spreading the gospel, and most of them died for it. To be a Christian takes courage. That's what I'm telling my ninth graders during the second service, and it's what I'm reminding all of us today. It's never supposed to be easy. It is supposed to be hard. Don't let that surprise you. It's Reformation Sunday as well. Martin Luther, you know, we talk about his innovations. We, we talk about the significance he has historically and theologically, but when you really study the story of the man, you see a courageous man whether it's posting those 95 theses or standing before the Holy Roman Emperor in his, 
and his lawyers at the Diet of Worms. And they're telling him to renounce everything that he's written or face pain of death. And yet he comes back and says, I cannot and will not renounce these things. Here I stand. That is a statement of courage. We remember that courage of Martin Luther on this Reformation Day. Be courageous. That's the encouragement of the Bible time and time again. You start reading the Bible and you look at the encouragements and exhortations of God through His prophets or Christ in the New Testament or St. Paul writing to the early church and that's what you'll see. Be strong. Be steadfast. Do not be afraid. Do not be shaken. Stand firm. Christianity is about courage. Do we have that courage? Because we need it. We need it or we won't survive. We won't remain with Christ without courage because there's all sorts of opposition, isn't there? Our ninth graders, if they don't know it already, they will feel it. There's all kinds of opposition, all sorts of ridicule they may face because they confess Christ as Lord and Savior. Right? They're going to be made fun of, perhaps, if not face to face. Well, the media will tell them how backwards they are, how misguided they are. We all see that, we all detect that in our media. They'll have friends who will say, do this, do that. You know, they'll, they'll be sort of chastised for actually having a backbone and, and wanting to do what is good and right. It takes courage to get out of bed on Sunday morning and go to church, especially after you leave the nest. And go to college, get a job, live on your own. It takes courage. There is persecution out there. And if you haven't noticed, this world is less and less comfortable and less and less hospitable to Christians, real Christians who live their faith. If you are not rooted, if you are not standing firm, you will be blown away. If you're easily shakable, you will be shaken. You've seen it. Maybe you've seen it in your own family. It's a hard thing to witness. Stand firm. Take heart. Have courage. This is the encouragement of Christ. That's what I'm going to tell the ninth graders today, and it's what I'm telling to you today because that chastisement, it never really ends. The, the persecutions that we may face, it never really ends. The ridicule will just get worse. The opinions that are contrary to God's word and God's will, they just keep bubbling up. It can make our life uncomfortable. It can seem easier at times just to sort of renounce our faith. Maybe loudly. Say, I don't believe any of that stuff. Or quietly. Just sort of inch away from it and inch away from it and inch away from it until we can't even see it in the mirror anymore. It takes courage, my friends. And where do we get this courage? That's the big question of the day. If our faith was all about our strength, our own bravery, what we have in our guts, what we have in our heart, could any of us really stand up to the world and all of those forces that want to separate us from God? Probably not. But we remember that we are not alone. We don't have to be the source of our own courage. We are not the source of our own strength. Christ is our courage. Christ is our strength. And we are baptized into Christ. Those confirmation students were baptized into Christ. They received the Holy Spirit. And so when they think about their life, it's not just about their failings and their successes. Right? Their courage and their strength in the face of opposition. No, they know that Christ has accomplished everything they need. That's the source of real courage. That's the source of strength. That Jesus, he didn't fold. He didn't renounce his purpose or his mission or his faith. Jesus, in fact, died on the cross and rose from the grave. Jesus was victorious 
And his victory is our victory. You want to talk about courage. Was anyone more courageous than the Son of God? How often was he ridiculed? How often was he plotted against? How often was he berated? He was beaten, tortured, slandered. And yet he took those beatings and he went to the cross for us. And his resurrection on Easter is vindication of his courage, his strength in the face of great hostility. And there is hostility for us as Christians. Make no mistake about that. So when we think about being courageous in our own right, we remember that Christ was courageous for us. He is our strength. He is our hope. He is our confidence. Because he died and rose, we know that we will die and rise as well. And because of what he did, I am no longer concerned with the opinions of man. I no longer fear man and what man can do to me. I only fear God. That's what Christ has done for us. That's why we can be courageous. That's what I'm going to tell my confirmation students. We've talked a lot about the Bible. We've talked about faith and grace and hope and love. And all of these things are important. But as I stand here on their confirmation day, that's what I'm going to tell them. Because that's what I would have told myself. If I could go back in time, look at 14-year-old Sam in the eyes, I would have said this. It's going to be tough. You're going to meet some opposition. You're going to meet some, host some hostility. It's not always going to be friendly. Stand firm. Be steadfast. Do not be shaken. Do not be moved. Be courageous. Christ is your strength. Christ is your courage. Christ is your courage, my friends. Be courageous. Amen. We stand for a prayer. In our prayers this morning, we lift up to God for healing and strength, Gary Ureen, Margaret Sheets, Seth Ellison, Don Nicholas, and Chris Myrold. We also pray for the family of Matt and Bobby Nicholas as Matt deploys to the southern border with the North Dakota National Guard. We also pray for the family of Karen Hansen, that the Lord give them hope and peace as they mourn the loss of a loved one. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, Lord, today we pray especially for Gary, Margaret, Seth, Dawn, and Chris. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You may be seated. At this time, we worship the Lord with our offerings.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand as we continue with our prayer. Let us pray. You alone, O Lord, are righteous in all your ways. We thank and praise you for the gift of Christ's perfect righteousness given to us in this holy sacrament. What we could never do for ourselves, you have done for us in Christ. Send us from this table with renewed hearts, ready to serve our neighbors with the love you have first shown us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. Please be seated. I want to thank you all for being here today. A special welcome to our visitors. I know we have some, some family in, uh, from out of town, perhaps, for those third grade Bible presentations. Third graders, congratulations on receiving your Bible. Uh, you know, it's going to be a great morning. We have Bible class, adult Bible class downstairs. Uh, we'll kind of finish up, I think, our discussion on 1 Timothy, or maybe we'll get close today. Uh, we'll have Sunday school, of course, for the kids. Coffee and donuts will be served, as always. Uh, a lot of good things coming up. Um, of course, confirma confirmation at 1030 service we're excited about. And we look forward to things like uh, shoebox packing and, and Thanksgiving Eve is going to be uh, coming up before you know it. So uh, a lot of good stuff. Today's message uh, was really one geared to the confirmands, but something that we all need to be reminded of at times. Uh, it's not a question of if we will face challenges to our faith in this life. We will certainly have troubles. Jesus promises us that. Uh, but we can remain courageous. We can stand firm in the midst of those troubles because we know that Christ is our strength. Christ is our courage. And so we go forth in that peace and hope today. So Vicar John and I will greet you in the hallway. God bless you all.